Damn it. Well, it seems to be working, Josh. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> there the, was the just no noise. Thing. There was just no noise, and the first headset wasn't working. Was definitely not working. Oh, the, oh okay. Yeah, that'll happen. Uh, well, it's it's the other one is cordless, and the battery died. So. Um, the, almost like um, Monday. Who knew? Yeah. So, okay. Um, welcome everybody to um, the SIG Contributor Strategy Governance Working Group meeting. Um, this is a recorded meeting for the Cloud Native Computing Foundation. Um, the, um, uh, let me post the link to the notes here in the chat so that everybody can put their names down. So, um, so if you want to add your name there, um, the, um, uh, we only currently have a couple of things on the agenda for this meeting. Oh, wait, first thing, this is an official meeting of the Cloud Native Computing Foundation. Therefore, we are under the CNCF code of conduct. Um, so please, um, I please um, behave um, as you would uh, with your more civilized relatives. Um, and, um, and we can have a good discussion about things. Um, and like I said, do put your name down on uh, the notes if you are here attending. Because um, I see seven people here and only two people, only two names on the thing. Um, this morning, we only have two things on the agenda. Um, one is that um, the steering committee proposal has been raised again on the TOC mailing list. Um, I uh, and uh, wanted to leave a space open in case anyone wanted to have any discussion of that. Um, I do see that we have two uh, contributors here from the NATS project. Um, so if they're here to speak, I would be interested in hearing their individual, their specific opinions on that, whether or not they think a special steering committee arrangement would be helpful for NATS. Um, uh, but beyond that, um, we'll go over that. Um, I wouldn't mind taking some time to discuss that because our second item, unless somebody's going to add something to the agenda, our second item is to actually get all of our documents currently in draft, which are all advisory documents merged. Um, uh, they've been sort of hanging out as PRs for an inordinately long time. Um, but half of those drafts were primarily authored by Dawn and she has told me she's going to be joining us late. Um, so I am happy to wait for that agenda item until she joins. Um, so that said, does anybody, if um, anybody else has something else to add to the agenda, um, please put it on that document there. Um, otherwise, we will go ahead and proceed. Okay. Um, so, uh, steering committee stuff, um, because the people who joined, let me do a recap. Um, so, um, I don't know, a month ago, Alexis made a post to the TOC proposing that the TOC adopt a kind of steering committee workaround for the multi-organization maintainer requirement. That is, the CNCF currently has a requirement for projects to reach the graduated level that they must have maintainers for more than one organization. Um, the, um, um, Alexis drafted a proposal, sent it directly to the TOC. Um, um, I, and proposed that um, the TOC recommend to projects that they adopt steering committees that were multi-organizational in place of having a multi-organizational group of maintainers. The, um, um, 
I, we had a meeting less than a week after that, a governance working group. We spent almost the entire meeting discussing this proposal. In the end, we recommended against the proposal um, on the basis that a project that has reached the, the point of proposing to be graduated and has not attracted a single main, maintainer from outside um, the primary participating organization um, has issues that cannot be resolved by a steering committee. Um, and, and while steering committees can be great for projects for other reasons, they are not effective for this particular reason. That was our recommendation, um, which we sent to the TOC. Um, it's important to know for people in this uh, group who don't attend the TOC meetings that this particular proposal is, has still not been discussed. Has it been discussed? I know it hasn't been voted on by the TOC. Um, also, it's not actually on the agenda because it was proposed by someone who's not a TOC member, so they're not actually required to vote on it. So I, the status is pending, I guess. Um, hence it coming up in the TOC again. Um, and since this is the governance working group, we wanted to provide an opportunity to discuss this, particularly with new people who did not attend the previous meeting. Um, so with all of that brought up to date, um, uh, our open questions are, um, oh, one of the other things we got out of this in the governance working group, which to recap is, um, our output for the governance working group is to prepare a body of advisory documents for projects to develop good governance and to assist the TOC in um, improving, maturing, you know, uh, evolving the governance requirements. Um, the, um, so one of the other things that came out of it was that we would prepare a document that included advice on establishing a steering committee if you want one, um, which is currently in draft. It's one of the things in the second half of this agenda to try to get merged. Um, so uh, with all of that, we have some new people here. Um, the question is, do we want to revisit? Do we want to do anything additional around steering committees beyond what we already have drafted? Um, are there other things that the governance working group needs to do because of this ongoing discussion? So feedback. And for that matter, we have two people here from Nats and I would be very interested in hearing from them since they have not spoken up in the TOC discussion if they feel that there's a path specifically for Nats, so not necessarily a general path for all CNC projects, but a path specifically for Nats that involves a steering committee um, as a way of dealing with some of the, the governance wonkiness um, uh, that's been discussed. Um, you know, stepping back a bit. Yeah. You know, this is this is all about I mean, essentially, this is all about the, the health of a project, right? Mm -hmm. Whether we move forward. Um, and in terms of looking at that health, when you have projects that span multiple repositories, we have 90, right? Mm -hmm. How do you determine whether, based on these repositories, whether a project is healthy? Do you take it as a whole or do you pick out a few um, to determine the health? And, and I'll just share our position. And as a whole, we have a, a question from GRPC. So, <laughs> yeah, sure. Um, yeah, I mean, as a whole, we on the Nats team, we have a lot of um, you know many many different companies contributing. Uh, the repositories for our servers are admittedly very Senadia heavy, and that's because you know it's not a weekend project for somebody. It's it's uh, a very, very uh, strong investment in time to actually get something running in the server. It's very complex. 
uh, highly performant. And, uh, you know, I've had my own PRs rejected uh, because they didn't come to par. So in that, we've been working with the community in, in taking their input and we can deliver their features with much more efficacy, which is better for the community. So in, in terms of project health, if you have, you know, again, if you have a project that spans many, many repositories and overall it's very, has a, a lot of maintainer diversity in terms of companies, um, you know, where, where, do you, where do you stand on that? Well, I mean, first, this is a discussion. And second, I'm not, you touched on a whole bunch of different issues. Sure. So I'm not sure exactly what question you're asking. Okay. In, wow. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, the, the question I'm asking is in terms of governance, if you have a project with many re repositories and diverse uh, company uh, contributions there, but a few core repositories that tend to be company heavy, where does that stand in terms of health, you know, in your, in your opinion, and then in terms of governance around to, you know, ba based on that, where do you go in terms of governance? What, what's your recommendation? Yeah, if I can add to that, I think a lot of it is, like we've said before, um, we're trying to solve this mysterious diversity issue for governing, I mean, for projects that want to graduate and we don't really know what that means exactly. So it's a bit of a moving target in the sense of like in the case of Nats and GRPC, you can look at the core for GRPC and well, I mean, there is more than Google maintainers, but there's not apparently whatever the number is that the TOC is looking for. But then there's like, you know, repos for like Swift and other stuff that is completely controlled <laughs> by other contributors. And so I think that's, you know, same thing that Colin's saying is like, these two projects in particular are very different than I think, you know, your standard project that has like the one core kind of repo. So it ties all back to that original question we're trying to solve of like this diversity issue and the steering, you know, was proposed as like a way to maybe have, a, at least my understanding was to have like an overall governing body that could kind of represent the project overall instead of again for grpc like the swift repo obviously the apple devs that's theirs so when it comes to like what features go into that implementation it gets deferred to them and so i think the idea that alexis had proposed was kind of like you have a steering committee for these projects that is composed of you know, people from the different repos, and then they become one big group that kind of oversees the health of the project versus looking at a project as you are your one core repo, and that's it. And we don't, you know, we, we assume that any health of the project is dependent upon that one core repo. Um, I hope I did, did you write by that call? <laughs> but I think like that's at least my kind of, you know, the thing that I, I know we've dealt with this with GRPC is like we keep coming back to that same question of like, it's this mysterious thing of like, what, what kind of diversity are we looking for when we say the diversity requirement? Because like even you, Josh, mentioned, you know, having a project that didn't have at least, you know, one other maintainer from someone else has its own problems, which I agree with, <laughs> but yeah. Um, the number is, it's like N plus one, essentially, and we don't know what N is. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. I think that's yeah. what the steering yeah. idea came from, was that it was a way to address some of those diversity concerns without having to say, for example, you know, um, you have to have 10 different maintainers on like the core infrastructure of a project when you may not actually have, you know, that many other people that want to do it. So I think that's what, that's how I've interpreted things up until now with regards to like what the steering committee idea. So I think that does tie into, like you were saying, Josh, like 
not every project needs this because this is kind of a unique situation that these, you know, um, NATS, like NATS and GRPC, like we're more of an implementation than like a standalone project. And so I think that's a lot of what the, the thought behind it was now. Um, I know from the GRPC perspective, I'm totally cool with the idea of a steering committee and, and you know, so has everybody else been, but it doesn't sound like that's going to be um, enough to solve the TOC diversity issue. So again, it's just kind of like, all right, what, I feel like we still haven't had that defined. Right. Yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah. so, but I mean, this is a case of, in, in this case, what you're discussing is let's take the problem with the TOC's way of evaluating projects and move it to a steering committee, which still doesn't solve the problem from my perspective, right? Yeah. I mean, the TOC, no, I I feel like the TOC should make the decision of either, you know, that there's some sort of qualitative test for whether drivers and plugins and supporting repos qualify for maintainer multi-org or don't, yep. right? Yeah, and I, I, that, I agree that completely. That needs yeah. to be solved, right? And if that right. problem is not solved, it doesn't matter if these people are sitting on a steering committee or not. I agree with you completely. I just, that's, that was my understanding of what kind of like when Alexis was proposing the steering idea, that's how I understood it was like, you know, hey, here's a relatively easy way to say like, we've got a lot of representation from other orgs, um, but you don't have to necessarily, you know, each project has its own requirements for how you become a maintainer. Um, but yeah, that was that was how I understood it. And like I said, it might work fine for GRPC and NATS, but to your point, it doesn't solve the issue for any other project. Although I don't know of any other project that's had this issue. Are we aware of any other CNCF projects that have had similar issues trying to yeah. graduate? What, what about TIKV? Yeah, and that was a good question, right? Is TAKV graduated? Um, Is it? I, think I don't they, know it. I, did they graduate? They've been proposed for graduation, and I believe that they have, you know, they've got like, I don't know, eight or nine maintainers, two of whom don't work for the main company. Um, so that's why I keep saying, you know, one, you know, that's why I keep saying these low numbers is that the actual written requirement for the TOC is not substantial. It's not a majority of maintainers. It's not a specific, is, the specific number is one. I was say, is there, I didn't even know that there was that. No, the, is, there have to be maintainers from multiple organizations. So. Okay, but then why did, okay. Because yeah, um, we have, you know, I would say April, we've, we've had this discussion with them since we started our graduation, you know, trek is yeah. that the requirement says two or more. Well, yeah. even on the server we have two or more but apparently that is not it's subjective so two that's or what more, i was gonna say <laughs> yeah it, it, it's a very subjective so, it's a moving target so it's very yeah. difficult for us to figure out what the toc actually requires from us yeah, really, right right the, so one of the things that i think subjected nats to special scrutiny is that you have an unusual arrangement with what is it it's maintainers and core maintainers uh, we have scrapped that. Oh, really? Yep. Yes. Okay. Because that would... even then, that's not really different than owners versus like other. It seems like other well, projects but, have but, owners, maintainers, and then approvers, and I don't know. Um, I cannot tell if TIKV has graduated or not, and I don't know why Amy has not responded yet with her encyclopedic knowledge. Maybe she can't tell either. Everything. Uh, just wanted to he knows everything. Everything. <laughs> he knows uh, the so I, so I just wanted to share like and the ah okay no just a, as a nuts maintainer it's my first time at this uh welcome uh, this call yeah uh, thank you uh, as, uh, so yeah it's been, has been very interesting to follow the discussion uh so yeah my yeah. name is wally i've been involved in the nuts project actually for around seven years now, uh, uh -huh. even before Synadia and before uh, this other uh, Apsera who used to maintain as well. Um, but uh, so yeah, it has been um, out there for a while. And so what I really like about the steering uh, committee proposal when it uh, came up is that it puts back some of the, into the spotlight, some of the, use, uh, the end users and uh, what they need 
um, instead of like the uh, livelihood of the maintainers. So, I mean, as an ads, as an ads maintainer, you do want like the best for your project, but we also want to graduate uh, how to put in a way like without like it costing us everything, you know? Uh, and right now it depends, you need to like basically maneuver where uh, it depends on the the livelihood of the maintainers, like uh, they have to be like either not working together, working together. Um, so it, the steering committee, what I feel is like switches back, put things into the spotlight of the, what the users need and I to satisfy the control requirements uh, about like not only one company being in control of the whole project. Uh, so that's, I just wanted to share my, my take on it on like uh, where I feel that the steering committee proposal uh, could be of value for, for us. So one of the things to, to me um, is that uh, both the, the criteria that, that are set through things like graduation requirements and also a uh, proposal at, at establishing steering committee um, uh, as, as a mechanism is that there's there's often a pretty big gap between theory and practice, uh, and what really matters is is how uh, how a team of individuals uh, and however they're arranged in terms of uh, their sponsorship or uh, how they're engaging with with users and and uh, accepting third party contributions. It all has to do with with the with how the the uh, the overall the project is co is collectively practicing like what is what's actually going on uh, and that uh, um, the the steering committee kind of uh, proposal as a as a document it's like well maybe you could implement a practice that's kind of, or, or you could implement a structure that's kind of like this but it doesn't necessarily translate into how uh, how that that will turn into the overall conditions that we want to cultivate, I think. Um, it, it's, it's like, for me, it kind of gets lost in translation. Exactly what are we trying to achieve? What's the, what are the outcomes, right? We want, we want people to, uh, uh, to feel comfortable that uh, um, if you have a meaningful contribution that completely makes sense to get into an open source project, that uh, it's going to be weighed on uh, on its merits and and not on uh, on some agenda that is external to the collective, right? Um, but uh, I'm not sure that that the steering committee uh, uh, as a as an organization of like you could implement this kind of group of people if that's really going to 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 get where I think we want to be. Yeah, I think it goes back to, again, like, what is the ultimate goal? And um, I think that's, that's kind of the open question of like, when we say, like you said, like, one big plus one. Um, and then also just kind of that understanding of um, what exactly we're trying to make happen. And I think it then becomes another question of like, there's always been this understanding that CNCF didn't mandate project governance. But if you are going to say that in order for a project to graduate, it has to have X, Y, Z in its governance, then is that effectively like a, not rule, but you know what I mean? Like, you, you know, you, you get to the point where you're no longer saying benevolent dictator for life projects are totally welcome to, to, to graduate. And that may be very, that may be 100% what the direction the TOC wants to take. But again, like, we just need to know, like, if it is going to be the kind of thing where I think, and I said this in the email, like, you know, I think we can all agree, every project's different and needs something different. But if we can have the TOC kind of tell us what exactly it is they're wanting to do, and if they are wanting to say, here's three governance models that we really like, projects pick one of these, then that's something that we as the working group can then create, you know, templates or guidelines or whatever. We just need that direction. And I feel like that's the thing that we've been kind of struggling to get. One of the things that I, I personally believe in, and, you know, I'm just speaking for myself here. Um, I, I, 
I think that projects work best when uh, the people who are doing the work are empowered uh, to find the, the mechanisms and the overall conditions and, uh, uh, and mutual trust in one another that they think uh, that, that, that makes them most effective as a community, right? Um, and sometimes that, that may uh, mean that uh, uh, in some point in time in a project's uh, overall development in history, that might, might mean that uh, uh, individuals um, are going to be most effective if they're able to have a closer connection to one another through shared sponsorship and being on the same team that's like building something together. Um, but you, what we want to cultivate is an attentiveness in that team of people that they are uh, um, collaborating in ways that are going to help that project grow and, and have uh, a, a very long and, and, and fruitful existence, right? Um, and one of the things that I, that, I, that I worry about in lots of different frameworks that we use and kind of evaluating performance and graduating to different levels. I think about this in the same way of like, what does it take to get promoted at a big company? Well, you have to go through and like check all these boxes. Um, and if you get too specific about exactly what the boxes are that you, that, that, that you need to check to like get, be promoted to the next level of engineer, yeah. uh, you end up with a, 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 an anchor bias, you end up like losing the, the personal narrative that's a very individual kind of aspect of like someone's, someone's uh, uh, career and, 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 and progression, right? You just lose all those details if you get very specific about the criteria and it has to look like this in order to move up to the next level. Yeah, that's a really great analogy, I like that. Yeah, so I do wanna clarify something, which is one thing that we did ask the um we did ask the toc and they did decide um is what the aims of the maintainer multi-organizational requirement were right because there's a variety of reasons why that requirement could exist and so we asked the current toc to make a determination on what their reasons were and the reasons that they picked were number one openness, that is the I, that CNCF projects are required to be open to contributions from all over the CNCF ecosystem. And okay. having somebody, having a person who can merge code, um, or having people who can merge code who work for more than one organization is a tangible demonstration of that. Um, and the secondary reason being continuity, that is the CNCF includes startups. Um, some companies have, you know, over the CNCF's lifespan stopped being involved with the CNCF. And as a result, for a project, if a project gets to graduate, the CNCF has a soft commitment to make sure that project continues in some way. And if 100% of the people who regularly work on code for that project all work for the same organization that adds a significant risk to the continuity. Um, so those are the two reasons that the TOC picks in, in terms of the two aims. And obviously given those two aims, and the reason why I wanted to get aims is given those two aims, you can imagine other ways to satisfy. It, is that what Tuff did? Um, not, I wasn't part of the evaluation, so. So, to the first one, I would say I don't I don't know what the Nats maintainer process looks like, but I know for gRPC, if you want to be a maintainer, all you have to do is ask. So the fact that we don't have a lot of other maintainers isn't like I don't. The barrier there is something that I think I know Paris has talked about a lot with the overall strategy sig of like how should CNCF be kind of, I think this all kind of ties in, like how should CNCF be helping projects get new maintainers and grow that kind of incubation status of like, to your point, if a project has been donated to CNCF and then everybody just like wins the lotto and goes to retire on an island without computers, because that's my, I don't like the bus factor. I like the island with no electricity factor. Um, 
then like CNCF is ultimately left with the project and so has to find a way to, you know, keep it going. So it's kind of like what kind of, I think that's a lot of what, you know, the contributor strategy group trying to figure out is like, how can we better serve projects to get those maintainers? And I, I think that some of the, again, I'm not going to speak for the Nats folks, but I know at least from the GRPC side, a lot of it is like, we don't have the resources necessarily to go out and actively recruit a bunch of extra maintainers. And I know a lot of smaller projects are even less resource. They don't have a me or a Paris or whoever. Um, so how can we, you know, make a program that scales up basically for all of these projects? Because especially like, I don't know how many projects are in CNCF right now, but can you imagine when they all want to graduate? <laughs> it's like, like 70, something like that. Crazy. And so like yeah. when you imagine all of them, have, you know, have graduated, um, you know, like the, the logistical overhead starts to become a little, a little much. And so it's how can we create these tools that projects can use and that it can scale up. And so that the CNCF ecosystem is assured it'll keep going, even if we all win the lottery. And I think this new maintainers from other orgs sort of turns into a chicken and egg problem, right? Because until you get those first couple from another organization, it looks like maybe I'm not welcome because all of the maintainers are from yeah. another company. And it's really hard. It's really hard to get that first one or, or two from another organization because you don't have any. And so you get this, you do get into kind of this loop where it is really hard to get, yeah. to get those first couple. But I think once you get over that hurdle, it gets a little bit easier. But we need to probably, I don't know, provide some guidance or help, I guess, for projects in that state. And, and some of that is in, incorporating, I think, in, in kind of my past experience, incorporating something that's very mindful in, in your practice as like a maintainer or project leader uh, of trying to find people that that are demonstrating kind of that interest uh, and and yeah. inviting them in, right? Um, uh, and sometimes that that can be hard if if you have a, a small team that's like um, that's not necessarily keeping a mindful kind of outward focus and and looking to to draw people in and and encourage them and invite them to to do more um, and and looking for the signs they're like okay we we should look for ways to give. Uh, to give you more opportunities and then more more uh, uh, more responsibility and authority over time. It's 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 very much a part of like of of growing people. Um, yeah. And all that is like to me, it's it's much more about the people aspects than than the company affiliation uh, parts. Uh, and I think that's where sometimes we get a little bit um, myopic uh, about like number of companies uh, uh, that can be represented and all this kind of stuff. It's what well, you can, yeah. you can, yeah. Well, well I, I think, think by, the time, by the time we get to sort of graduation, I, I would like, I mean, it would be nice if projects have gotten over that hurdle of just like the first, the first couple, because I do think that that shows, I mean, you're right. It is kind of a person problem. It's, it's kind of a resource problem. It's people problems. Um, but I think it shows a project's maturity that once they're starting to get over that hurdle of having the first couple of maintainers from another organization. And I think it's, I think it's important now. I mean, numbers aside, I don't, I don't know how we, that's the yeah. hurdle we need to figure out, but I, I, I do think it's kind of, kind of important to see that in a project. Well, and I think it also, again, like GRPC, we have a lot of, we have, I don't even know the number, full number. We have a lot of different repos because we have a lot of different implementations. Um, if there are 20 Apple devs working on the Swift repo and you know, I know Salesforce has done a lot with their reactive, I think it's reactive JS. Um, that's all well and good, but like they can't take over the entire project should we all win the lot of, you know what I mean? Like, I think that's the issue that comes down to you is like this, this standard that we have works great for some projects, but it doesn't work for every project. And when you do have something like GRPC and NATS that have this, you know, much broader scope, you can't apply the same standard because I could have, you know, one repo, like the Go implementation can have, you know, 
20 different companies, 20 different people from 20 different companies, you know, represented on that maintainer list. But that doesn't mean they're going to pick up <laughs> should, you know, the rest of them, the rest of the repos and implementations just fall away. And so I think that's where we get into this situation, at least from the NAS GRPC side of where it's like, it doesn't work for us. And it's not because, and what made me think of this is specifically like what Matt was saying about, you know, um, identifying those folks in the community and, and, and bringing them in. And, and with the GRPC case, I have done that. But again, it's, it's Ryan who's written his own implementation and that's great. He is happy to, you know, <laughs> control that repo but he could not take on all of it should something happen. And he quite frankly doesn't necessarily have an interest or even the skill to take over the core implementation, which is like C++. So, you know, then it comes down to the issue of like, you can't expect the Java maintainers to be responsible for the Go implementation, et cetera. And that's why we get in that spinning cycle. And I'm sure it's very similar for Nat. It is. It is. And, and I, I do think this needs to be quantified. You know, I, I agree. Um, I agree that that does take some of the, the personal aspects out, right? The people, the connections, but we've met the letter of graduation for over a year now, you know, letter of the law. Um, and the, you know, quite frankly, the bar keeps moving. Uh, so we're looking for something to help us move forward. And, you know, if, if that's a steering committee, great, we're all on board. But we just, we need guidance. What do we need to do to graduate? Yeah, and I think it ties into like, you know, and maybe this is something that we as the governance working group can kind of take a stab at of like, if we accept the you know, I'm thinking of it like a science project. Like if we accept the proposal that not all projects are like Kubernetes, um, then what are the different types of projects? And, you know, I know we've talked about different things about like having labels on GitHub to show like the status of a project and, you know, be more specific as to call out whether or not like it's one maintainer or multiple maintainers. But what if we kind of took this approach of like, hey, we see there's X number of projects that have this type, this structure that requires a little extra handling. It's a little unusual. And then, you know, we can advise the TOC on, you know, hey, recognizing that there are these different types of projects, here's how you should really apply the standard to these different types. Does that resonate with anybody? Yeah, I'm right. I'm, I'm dubious that you could. I'm dubious that you could quantify the different types, but. Well, you know, and yeah, yeah, it's probably again like n plus one. You know, you know, maybe it's it's almost like an audit of the existing CNCF projects, which there are sixty six exactly. Amy tells us because Amy knows everything, and she's awesome. Um, but if there's sixty six different projects, like, can we do some sort of high level grouping in terms of not necessarily the governance model they have today, but in terms of like, is it a mono repo? Is it an implementation? Is it something that is meant to be a platform and therefore could have, oh, 63, she says. So there's three more she owes us. Um, you know, if, so like, is there something that it can be, um, you know, a platform that people could build on top of where theoretically if the main piece was no longer maintained, you still have these other pieces maintained, things like that. Like, I wonder if we can just do kind of a high level audit of all the different projects. <clears throat> and I wonder if that would also tie into some of the work from Stink Trip Strat. Of like, you know, I know Paris has got the, we did the survey of like what you know models people have and things like that, but we can potentially kind of tie in with some of the work that they're doing and do kind of this overall look at like the different projects and kind of where they, what grouping they fit into. You want to take a stab at that? 
See if you can come up with some reasonable groups. Oh, April, did you lose sound? I think I lost the ability to hear. You are you are kind of digitizing. Okay. So I think I, I think to to, to me um, in, in an approach of like grouping existing graduate projects and kind of inspecting their governance and things like that, it's like we're we're trying to do a, a, a sorting hat function. You know, who's who's going to be Gryffindor and who's Slytherin, um, and it's also a, it's a point in time. And I think that uh, that really resilient projects in their communities. Uh, uh, evolve over time. They grow. They change. They 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 were like, well, we tried it this way last year, and then um, that wasn't perfect. Like there isn't, there aren't any. There's no perfection in any grouping of human beings, right? And and the only thing that you can do is try to continuously improve. Uh, and if you look at a point in time, you're like, well, here's a governance structure that we have today. Um, and and then um, you know, like like was said earlier, you know, we have this this uh, this. Uh, uh, different levels of maintainer stats, and we 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 got rid of that. Um, <clears throat> hopefully, that we we got rid of it is because we found that it wasn't functioning the way that we wanted. Like it, it caused some kind of uh, 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 outcomes that were not uh, overall beneficial to the, the the way the project runs, and not we're trying to meet the criteria for graduation. Right? Um, if the goal is we need to graduate. Uh, um, uh, to get to you know uh, uh, the next level in CNCF, but th that that overall is not aligning you to build the best, the more most vibrant, most diverse, most resilient uh, kind of of community. Then that's not necessarily we're not the overall mechanics of this the the incubation sandbox graduation type uh, process is not leading to the desired outcome. And we need to look at that, I think. Very true. And, and as far as I'm aware, post-graduation, there are no requirements for a company to keep the standards that were given or they, they met in graduation. And, and that leads to uh, kind of looking at, well, we need to make sure that there's governance there that uh, uh, is going to maintain that status at the time that we looked at have you met have you met the the graduation criteria right okay. and so that that in practice i think i might be wrong about this is just my intuition i haven't really done a deep inspection of of these kinds of projects but that often means that it, it becomes really hard to change the governance of a project which means it it actually makes a less resilient community because you're not able to adjust uh for changing dynamics Okay, um, I'm going to pause you there because we have 13 minutes left and I would like to get our outstanding pull requests resolved, preferably on this call, um, because this includes advice to projects on leadership, um, which is obviously relevant to here. So um, let me do that and then we can go back to this if we finish in time. Okay, uh, let's see if I can actually... Somebody sharing? No, you just blanked out. Okay, there we go. So um, we have four outstanding pull requests, although the project health document is actually waiting on contributor growth working group. Um, I believe it's already been approved by um, I, by uh, this working group. Um, so there's a couple of things here. Um, one is just a few updates for governance references. For those of you who are not aware, we have a document here that just has a large list of references 
for things to look at. Um, is there any reason to not just go ahead and merge this? I already checked it to make sure the links work. Yeah, this this actually I think wasn't wasn't about the links of references. This was about the governance working group was still listed as proposed in the okay. on the readme. And so I fixed that and instead of linking to the issue where you were talking about it, mm -hmm. I linked to our um, governance working group readme. So it was just a cleanup and I added the meeting time for this meeting, okay. which wasn't on there. Okay. Um, so quick check for any objections, otherwise I'll go ahead and merge it. Okay, and then um, um, a longer one, um, primarily authored by Don, which is advice on leadership selection. Um, for those of you who actually haven't looked at this, this is a long document saying, hey, here's a whole bunch of different, um, a whole bunch of different uh, ways that you can, you know, compose the leadership of your project, including um, a steering committee. Um, the, um, and again, this is advice to projects on how do I, you know, build a open project, et cetera. Um, the, um, it's been out there for a while. Um, this PR was actually the result of a previous drafting process that we started at one of these meetings on a Google document. Um, obviously this document is not 100% complete because no such document ever could be. 100% complete, but I think we should merge what we have so that we actually have something. Um, so, um, any comments or objections? And this is pull request number 52 if you want to actually look at the full text yourself while you're on this call. I don't object to that. I, I confess I haven't had a chance to actually read it all yet. Um, but I think it makes total sense to just get it out there and then we can edit as need be. Yeah. I mean, I feel like we need to have a higher standard for, well, the thing is, you know, with all of these, even after we approve these, there's still one more stage, which is that right. the TOC needs to approve them and then put them in another location, which they still have not determined where they become official advice to projects. So, um, the, um, okay, so let's go ahead and merge that. And then, um, the last one here is a second draft of what is governance. Um, so the history, this one is, this was a bunch of material written by me and Brian Berenhausen of Red Hat um, for the Open Source Way book um, that I revamped to make it specific to the CNCF projects um, and then got a lot of input on it from the rest of the governance working group um, and then opened it as a, um, oh, this still needs a couple of changes before we can merge it. Um, then open to the PR. It does need a couple of, there's still a couple of outstanding changes. Um, some things that, um, uh, that MSW pointed out, um, uh, the, um, um, so we can't merge at this meeting. Um, the, um, So all I'll say is um, please leave your comments on it in the next day or so. Otherwise, you know, um, and beyond that, we'll resolve what's outstanding and merge that. Um, one of the weird things about this one, like a couple of others, is that it has some dead end links in it because we have a whole, and so then this brings up the other thing is we have a whole, plan set of documents which we have barely started on. 
Um, doo -doo -doo. And this is a call to everybody on the, on the call. If you want to take on any of these planned documents, um, please go ahead and do. Just claim them in that issue. Um, if you want to avoid duplicating somebody else's work, you're not even required to claim them, but you know it's always annoying to duplicate work um, and say, hey, I'm going to work on this um, because we want to get all of this material out to projects so that we can say, hey, here's a whole bunch of advice on how to improve governance for your project um, based on people who you know, have experience doing it for other projects. Um, and as you can see, we have quite the list. Okay, um, so that is pull requests. Um, I don't think we have any open issues other than that. Um, oh, the end user promotion criteria we need to actually take back to the TOC. Um, that's another one where clarity required. Um, um, and obviously <laughs> we spent a long time discussing the multi-org thing, which is why it is not resolved <laughs> because we keep discussing it. Um, so, okay. So back to discussion, because we have five minutes left, unless somebody else has something to say about current open pull requests and issues. OK. Um, so those are resolved. We got a couple of things merged. Um, any further discussion on this? And since we only have five minutes left, let me encourage people we have on CNCF Slack, we have the SIG contributor discussion Slack. Um, please comment on that. Um, you have now seen, if you weren't previously aware of some of the issues and pull requests we have in the SIG contributor strategy repo, where we discuss these matters. Please use any or all of those mechanisms to continue following up on this. Um, uh, we don't want to lose anybody's input. Um, and there are obviously specific outstanding problems that we want to resolve, whether or not we resolve them with a the steering committee. Okay, well, I think we're all on the same page in that we, we all want healthy projects and we want what's best for CNCF. And, um, you know, I, I think this, you know, hopefully this is a productive discussion and we'll keep churning through this. Cool. Okay. Well, thanks everybody. And thanks for participating in what was a great discussion. Um, and I'll see you on all the other things. And plus we'll have this meeting again in two weeks. Sounds good. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, all. Thanks, everybody. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Bye.